Madras, it's a South Indian curry from the city of Chennai. It's usually made with beef, but you can make it with chicken, which is what we're doing today. Cuts down the time, makes it cheaper, and of course, it's absolutely delicious. Let's make it. Now for this recipe, I'm using both brown and red onions. These are interchangeable. You can use one or the other. I like to do a mixture of both, and these can be thinly sliced the whole way across, and you can dice them if you prefer that. We then need four cloves of garlic and 35 grams or 1.2 ounces of ginger. Peel the ginger and then grate both of these along a microplane to create a paste. Mix them together because they're going into the curry at the same time. Next is 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of coriander or cilantro root or stem. I'm using stem for this because I couldn't get any root. This can be roughly chopped. It adds a beautiful infusion to our curry. And if you don't like it, it's completely optional. So don't worry about that. As for the chicken, it's 1.2 kilos or 2.6 pounds of boneless and skinless chicken thigh. I'm going to dice it. I like to slice it in half lengthways and then cut it into either two or three different slices depending on the size. Just make sure they are all the same size. That way everything will cook at the exact same time. With the knife prep out of the way, place a large high rim pan or pot over a high heat. Add in 42 grams or three tablespoons of ghee or sunflower oil if you don't want to use ghee. Allow this to melt or become nice and hot. Then we can add in all of the chicken, spread it around so it's not sitting on top of one another. We do want to season this up quite well with salt and cracked black pepper. I used about 20 cracks worth here. Let the chicken sit for a couple of minutes to get a little bit of brown crust on the bottom, then start mixing it all through. We're going to cook this for about six to seven minutes until brown. It's not going to be fully cooked through at this stage because we just want to get the flavor in the chicken as well as in the pan, then remove it from the pan and set aside. Next job is to turn the pan down to medium heat, add in one teaspoon or three grams of whole cumin seeds, three bay leaves, dried or fresh, and the coriander root or cilantro root that we chopped up before. Mix this well and toast it for about a minute to a minute and a half until it becomes nice and fragrant and the seeds start popping. Then we can add in both the onions or one, depending on which one you chose to use, the garlic and ginger paste, as well as a nice bit of salt and cracked black pepper, 10 cracks worth or so. Mix everything together, going to saute this for about 10 to 12 minutes until everything's fragrant and the onions have taken on a really nice color. Then add in one and a half teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, two and a half teaspoons of ground garam masala, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground turmeric, half a teaspoon of cashmere chili powder, and eight to 10 fresh curry leaves. That's completely optional if you can't get them. And mix this all together. We're going to toast this for about a minute to a minute and a half. For the sauce, add 800 grams or two cans of diced tomatoes, rinse them out of a little bit of water so we're not wasting anything, as well as one can or 400 milliliters of coconut milk. You can use coconut cream here, but it will be extremely thick and a bit too much. Add in the chicken along with any of the resting juices, then mix everything together. We're going to bring this up to a simmer whilst making sure everything's evenly combined. All of those flavors have become friends, and once it is at a simmer, place a lid on, put it over a low heat, and cook it for about 35 minutes. In the meantime, add one cup or 200 grams of basmati rice that's been washed into a saucepan along with two cups or 500 milliliters of cold water. Personally, I'm adding in one cinnamon stick, one bay leaf, three cardamom pods, and a star anise. It's all completely optional, as well as a pinch of salt. Mix this all together. Make sure nothing's stuck together. Bring it up to a boil. Place on a lid. Reduce the heat to low and cook for 12 minutes. Turn it off the heat. Let the lid sit on for another four minutes. Then remove that lid. Remove the fragrances that they've done their job. We don't need to use them anymore. Then fluff this up with a fork or a spatula. And this can be popped aside for the time being. And you can leave the lid on if you want to keep it hot. Going back to the curry, it's been cooking away for about 35 minutes. Remove that lid, give this a really good mix through, make sure the sauce is nice and thick. Check it for seasoning, adjust if necessary, and this can also be removed from the stovetop. This recipe will serve three to four people depending on portion size. Make sure you do remove the bay leaves though before you eat them, nobody wants to eat that. Garnish it with a little bit of coriander or cilantro, of course, if you like it. Serve it with rice, a couple of pieces of naan, and there you have a beautiful chicken madras curry that looks and smells incredible. After everything is done though, there is only one thing left to do. And that is of course, we can then dig in. That right there is a delicious curry. There's so much going on. The chicken is extremely tender and it's not that hot at all. So if you want to make it a little bit hotter, go for it. And if you don't like spice, then this one's probably perfect for you like this. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.